Thank you very much. Gentlemen, thank you for being here today. I certainly appreciate your many, many years of service. I'd like to start um, General Austin and General Votel. Just in your professional military opinion, you have served a while um, in our armed services. I was going to say over 40 years of service, but we'll just say many, many years. Um, and again, thank you for that. What are the implications of, of Russia's actions in Syria and and the world's response or lack of response with Russia in Syria um, and their international behavior. I, I guess what I'm trying to get at is, you know, what, what lessons do you think Putin is taking out of Syria? Um, and what concerns should we have about what Putin is doing in Syria? We've heard discussion about weaponization of the migrants. Um, can you give me a little input on that, please? Uh, thank you, Senator. Um, Russia's uh, entry into this problem set has made a very complicated problem uh, even more complicated. Um, you know, when you consider the actors that are part of this, you know, the regime, the Russians, uh, Turks, uh, the YPG, the uh, the, the Iranians, uh, Lebanese Hezbollah, uh, Daesh, uh, all of these elements, uh, you know, uh, interacting with each other in a fairly confined uh, battle space. Uh, you know, the introduction of, uh, of Russia has made this more complicated, especially so, uh, especially because of the fact that although they said they came to uh, counter uh, terrorism, to counter Daesh, uh, what we've seen them do principally is bolster the Assad regime. And, uh, and that potentially extends the conflict, uh, you know, and, and so, you know, my personal opinion is that as Russia entered this, uh, they had no designs of being there for a long time. I don't think they can be there for a long time because uh, of the impact that it will have on their economy. Mm -hmm. but, uh, but clearly, uh, they've tried to use this to demonstrate muscle uh, and, uh, and, and impress the region. Uh, I think they'll have an opposite effect uh, when they came in and aligned themselves with, uh, with the Syrian regime. They, they also aligned themselves with the Iranians and with Lebanese Hezbollah. And that will eventually begin to alienate them from many of the Sunni Arab states uh, in the region. Do you see that that's his overall goal, is the alienation of those groups and alignment uh, with himself? And has he achieved that? I, I think what they wanted to do was gain uh, uh, greater, uh, certainly they wanted, wanted access to a port in the Mediterranean. Uh, they want influence in the region and wanted to increase their influence uh, in the region by doing some of the things that they've done. But I think at the end of the day, they'll probably have the opposite effect of what they wanted to do. Okay, thank you, sir. General Votel. Senator, I, I agree with, uh, with everything that General Austin uh, just said, and I would add one, one additional point. Is I think the big lesson that we, learn, we are learning out of this is, uh, is this uh, ab ability to operate in the gray, gray area, this area between normal state competition that we normally expect and open warfare. And I think, in my view, this is an area in which uh, Russia is engaging, and Syria is another example of it. Certainly Eastern Europe is another example. The Ukraine is another example of it, where they are challenging us short of open warfare, but they are certainly challenging our interests, challenging our influence, and, uh, ch and challenging uh, uh, the interests of many of our allies. And so for, for, for those of us in SOCOM, we are paying very close attention to this and, and trying to understand and uh, the, the gray zone and how that is going to impact our future operations and how we contribute in that, uh, in that particular area. Okay, I appreciate that. My time is short, but if very quickly, um, if you could just, uh, General Austin, talk about the Sunni fighting force in Iraq. Why is it taking so long to develop a force which would keep that region stable? Well, uh, one of the things I think that must be done, Senator, and I think you probably feel the same way, is that uh, the Sunnis have to be a part of this solution going forward. And so the, we have worked with the, with the leadership of the Prime Minister uh, to, uh, to enlist and, uh, and hire and, and train and pay uh, Sunni tribal elements that uh, can, can help us. Uh, they have across the board enlisted uh, 
uh, about uh, 15,000 or so of, uh, of Sunni uh, these Sunni tribal elements. And they are proven that they're, they're very reliable uh, uh, troops. Now, the reason it's taken um, a long time is because there are hard hardliners in the, in the environment that, uh, that don't want to see a large uh, Sunni uh, force uh, armed and equipped uh, because of, uh, you know, mm -hmm. the bad experience with, uh, with Daesh. But nonetheless, uh, the Sunnis have to be a part of uh, the solution going forward. Uh, we see the Prime Minister doing some things uh, uh, to, uh, to, to enlist their help, and we just need, to, need some, some more activity here. So. Okay. Well, gentlemen, again, I appreciate it very much. Thank you for your service. Thank you, Mr. Chair.